Hello and welcome again to our lesson video notes, uh, starting up with chapter 7, lesson 2 over similar polygons. We'll get started right away and try and keep this video as short as possible. So in the past, in lesson 7 one, we used proportions to solve problems. Well now we're going to use those proportions to identify similar polygons and we're going to solve problems using properties of similar polygons. Alright, so here's what I want us to recognize. Uh, our definition of similar polygons are polygons with the same shape but not necessarily the same size. Congruent polygons had the same size and shape, but similar polygons are going to have the same shape but not always the same size. Most of the time, in fact, they won't have the same size. So in this case, we could say triangle 1 is similar to triangle 2. Triangle 1 is not similar to triangle 3. They have different shapes. Okay, and so we would write that like this. Triangle 1 is similar to triangle 2, and we would write triangle 1 is not similar to triangle 3. Okay, and so here's our similar polygons key concept. Two polygons are similar if and only if their corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding side lengths are proportional. And so we have these two quadrilaterals. Okay, we have trying, or, uh, quadrilaterals A, B, C, D, and W, X, Y, Z. Notice that angle A and angle W are congruent, B and X are congruent, C and Y are congruent, and D and Z are congruent. So corresponding angles are congruent. And then we have the corresponding sides, A, B to W, X, B, C to X, Y, 21, I'm sorry, D, C to X, or to Y, Z, and D, A, to ZW. And we have all of those working out to be a 3 to 1 ratio. 15 to 5 simplifies to 3 to 1. 12 to 4 simplifies to 3 to 1. 21 to 7, again 3 to 1. And 18 to 6, again 3 to 1. So we can say that ABCD is similar to WXYZ. So let's try example 1. We're going to use similarity statements to talk about similar triangles. So in this uh, example, if triangle ABC is to be similar to RST, you should notice that A comes first in its label and R comes first in its label. Angle R and angle A should be congruent. Okay, so we can say angle A is congruent to angle R. Angle B is corresponding and congruent to angle S. Angle C is congruent to angle T. And those are all in the same place. So that's how we write all the pairs of corresponding angles. And we want to write a proportion that relates the corresponding sides. And so we should notice that AB, since A is congruent to R and B is congruent to S, then segment AB should be compared to segment RS. And that ratio would be the same as segment BC Notice that I'm using the letters from this bigger triangle all on top of these ratios. BC would then relate to ST, making sure I get the order the same. Okay, and then if I've said sides AB and sides BC on the tops of these, then I should say side AC or side CA. I don't care how you write that as long as we keep that order the same in both triangles. And there are the proportion that make those sides proportional. All right, let's go ahead and take a look now at what a scale factor or similarity ratio is another way of saying it is. The ratio of the lengths of two corresponding sides of two similar polygons is called the similarity ratio or scale factor. Okay, so the scale factor of ABC to DEF is going to be the ratio we get when we compare any side of ABC to its corresponding side of DEF. Well, if I look at triangle ABC, let all three sides are 3. And AB technically corresponds to DE. So that would be 6, but all those would be 3 to 6s, and so we can reduce that to 1 half. So the scale factor of ABC to DEF is 1 to 2, either as a fraction or as a ratio written that way. But if we change the order of these, it's going to change to 6 over 3, which should be 1 over 2. I'm sorry, 2 over 1. Let's get that correct, 2 over 1, or 2 to 1 this way.
All right, so let's take a look at example two. We have an example of where uh, Tan is designing a new menu for the restaurant where he works. Determine which size for the new menu, either A or B, is similar to the original menu. Okay, and whichever one is similar, we need to write that similarity statement and its scale factor. So let's take a look at the dimensions of our original menu. We have a 12, sorry, 12 by 10 rectangle. Okay, and menu A is now 14 by 12, and menu B is 9.6 by 8. And so we have to figure out which of these would have a similar ratio if we compared corresponding parts. So let's check original to menu A first. Original to A would be 10 to 12 and 12 to 14. Okay, so this ratio, 10 to 12, reduces to 5 out of 6, and 12 over 14 reduces to 6 over 7. Now, if these were to be proportional, then their corresponding sides should have equal ratios. Well, we have one ratio of 5 over 6, another ratio of 6 over 7. Those are not equal ratios, so A is not proportional to the original. Okay, so let's try B, the original to menu B. Well, if I compared this 10 inch to its corresponding, we'd have 10 over 8, which is 5 over 4. And if I com compared the other dimension, 12, to its corresponding dimension, 9.6, and you divide those out, you do get 5, point, or 5 to 4. So these both are equal ratios. So we can say that menu B is proportional to the original, or we can summarize it by saying the similarity statement that A, B, C, D is similar to R, S, T, and that's a letter U, sorry, it's covered up, with a scale factor of 5 to 4. All right, and that leads us to example three. In example three, we're going to use similarity to find measures in our polygons. So in example A, we are given these two similar polygons. We know they're similar because all corresponding angles are congruent, and then we have similar similarity ratios that we can come up with. So we're to find x and y. Since these are similar, all corresponding sides should be proportional. So you'll notice that AB corresponds to RS. So if I choose that ratio, AB to RS, I should have a 6 to 4 ratio. And we can reduce that, make it a little bit easier on us. That becomes 3 to 2. So any other ratio should compare to that. So when I am trying to find x, it corresponds to tu. So I'm going to use cd over tu, which would be x over 3, which should be the same ratio as this 3 to 2 ratio that I came up with earlier. And if we solve that proportion, if we look back at our lesson 7, 1, we cross multiply to solve. 2x then equals 9, so x would have to equal 4.5. To find y, we're going to use this same ratio, but we're going to compare this vu side to ed, so we're going to use ed over vu to get 8 over y plus 1, and that should equal the same similarity ratio of 3 to 2. So again, cross multiply, but don't forget to distribute 3 to y and 1. And that would equal 8 times 2, which is 16. And when we solve this for y, we get 3y equals 13. And if we divide by 3, y 
is either 13 thirds or 4 and 1 third or 4.3 repeating. I'd rather just leave it as 4 and 1 third, that's more exact. So we're going to use the same kind of strategies to find the missing values A and B in example B. So why don't you take some time, pause the video, and work through solving those to find the values of A and B. Remember to set up your proportions and stick with the same proportion for both parts. Alright, here's what we should get. To find A, we set up the ratio RA over OL. Those are the corresponding sides, so we'd have 4 over A, but again that should equal 5 to 3. So we cross multiply and A is 2.4. To find B, we set up the ratio TR to ZO, or OZ, and we get 2 over B minus 6, but that should also equal 5 thirds. So we cross multiply and solve for B, and B is 7.2. All right, that brings us to our final uh, concept and idea, and that is the perimeters of similar polygons. If two polygons are similar, then their perimeters are proportional to the scale factor between them. So because perimeter is a length measurement, whatever ratio we have for one side to its corresponding side is going to be the same ratio as the sum of all four sides to the sum of the other four sides. So the perimeter ratio is the same as your similarity ratio, is all that really says. So Let's try example 4a. If a, b, c, d, e is similar to r, s, t, u, v, find the scale factor of a, b, c, d, e to r, s, t, u, v, and the perimeter of each polygon. Well, there's some markings here that help us figure these out. If this is 4, the congruent segment over here is also 4, and this is 6. Now, I don't know what a, d, or a, b, and d, c are, but I do know that they are the same measurements, and these are similar. Now since I have these other measurements, like 7 here, and these being congruent as 10.5, even though I don't know TS, I can find these using my proportionality. So I'm going to use the given sides to come up with that similarity ratio, or scale factor. The scale factor would be whatever AE to its corresponding RV side would be. In that case, it's 4 to 7. So that's our scale factor. The perimeter factor would be the same thing. So we can use this to find the missing measures. So here's what I want us to do first. I'm going to find AD and then the same step it'll also tell me what DC is by using that ratio and plugging in a proportion. This ratio of 4 over 7 should be the same as AB over its corresponding side 10.5. And so all we have to do is cross multiply and solve for AB. 7 times AB equals the product of 4 times 10.5, which is 42. And then we divide by 7, and we get that AB equals 6. So if AB is 6, DC is also 6. Now we need to use the same process to find ST. You can use that same ratio, 4 sevenths, since I am looking for BC. I'm sorry, I'm looking for TS. I'm going to put the 6 value of BC on top, and underneath I'll put the TS. Again, cross multiply, we have 4 times that TS equals 7 times 6, which is 42. And if we divide by 4 on both sides, TS, in fact, is 10.5. And that makes sense, because we found that these were both 6, which is also the bottom side. So these, both being 10.5, would also be the bottom side there. So now we just need to find the perimeter of both figures. In that case, we need to add both of those up. So if we add 6, 4, 4, 6, and 6, we get this perimeter is 26. And if we add 7, 7, 10.5, 10.5, 10.5, we get 45.5. And to check and make sure those are the correct answers, we're going to make sure that the ratios give us the same as 4 over 7. If these are actually correct, then 4 times 45.5 should equal the same as 7 times 26. Cross products should be equal. And they are. 4 times 45.5 equals 182, and 7 times 26 also equals 182.